Hey, I'm Steve and welcome to Jerome's Chrome. When it comes to diagnosing engines, especially older ones with carburetors, I have a lot to learn. Good news is I have the perfect car to learn on. This is my 1978 Corvette. It sat abandoned for 20 plus years before Derek from Vice Grip Garage got a hold of it. And then he finally sold it to me, a dude who's in just a little bit over his head with this project. However, I have some amazing subscribers helping me out in the comment section. And I am confident that between that, a little bit of basic knowledge, and a lot of determination, that combination of things is gonna get this car roadworthy again. So over the next few videos, I'm gonna be learning how to diagnose engines. At least the fundamentals that someone should know before tackling a project like this. In the coming weeks, I'll be covering compression testing and plug wear, vacuum testing, fuel pressure testing, checking and adjusting the timing, carb mixture stuff and carb tuning, and anything else that may come up along the way or anything else that you guys recommend in the comments. So yeah, I have a lot to learn, but there's only one way to do that, and that's to dig in. So let's get started this week with the big fundamental compression testing. First thing I gotta do is pull out all the spark plugs, which I'm hoping go smoothly. These headers probably aren't gonna make the job any easier on me or anything, but I have seen a whole lot worse. Right now I'm just popping off the plug wires one by one and I'm just gonna label them just to make sure that I don't get anything mixed up. And I'm just hoping that these plugs don't fight me. It would have made sense to do a compression test on this car before spending any time putting a new carburetor on it and whatnot. Because the compression test is a way to find out, is your engine actually worth working on? It's testing the health of each cylinder in the engine to see if your rings are in bad shape, if the cylinder is sealing well, if you have leaky valve or valve issues or blown head gasket, and probably a lot of other stuff. But in general, in the most basic of terms, it's a way to find out, is this engine in good shape or is this engine in bad shape? Whew. It's like 29 degrees in this garage. There we go, plug wires are all labeled. And now I just gotta get the plugs out the car. As I pull each plug, I got a piece of cardboard here labeled that I'm just gonna set the plugs on just so I can kind of keep everything organized. I think I'm just gonna start with the easy ones that aren't directly in front of the header and go from there. I'll let you know what I run into. I really can't get a socket on any of these plugs because of the header. So what I'm doing is just getting in there and setting the socket on by hand. Got it. This right here, ratcheting wrench on the socket, makes a low profile socket wrench. I actually got all those out in like 10 or 15 minutes, so can't complain about that. Here's what we're working with on the plug condition. I wish I had the knowledge and experience to tell you guys more about what these spark plugs are saying. I know some guys can look at spark plugs and give you a, 
a whole history on a vehicle, but that's not me. Yet. In the meantime, here's what I'm observing. Most of the plugs look the same. They're all very black and sooty. I think we can rule out running lean. I'm not 100% sure if this is dry or oily. There's a touch of wetness around the threads, but it's hard for me to judge the electrode area. If it's dry, it's most likely been running rich since the late 90s, but if it's oily, it could be oil getting past the rings or the valves. To be honest, they have so much buildup on them, I think it's hard to get an accurate reading. Like, here's a new one. One thing to note, though, is number eight. This is the one that looks a little different. It has a little bit of color on top of the carbon buildup. Just on this one side. I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe because this gap is so tight with buildup that it's causing a misfire. But I really can't be sure. I'm just kind of guessing. But just the fact that it is different than the rest of them is just, you know, I got a little cause for concern. There's more things that I think and can speculate on, but that's what I know. They're all old and black. And number eight, is a little bit different than the rest. Besides that, please comment if you can tell anything else just by looking at these plugs, because I would love to learn more, and this is a great way to do it. Before I can actually run the compression test, there's three things that I gotta do. Have to disable fuel, have to disable spark, and have to hold the throttle wide open. So I'm just gonna pop that fuel line off the carb, unplug this plug from the back of the distributor, and just open this up. I took the spring off, just open this up and zip tie it back to the bracket. I just unplugged all the wires from the distributor and check out this one. That's not good. But yeah, that's all disconnected now. So just got to pull back the throttle. There we go. No fuel. No spark. Wide open throttle. I think we're good to go. I just made a post about the spark plugs on the community tab and I just want to thank NW mod 39 or new mod 39 for reminding me to hook up the battery charger while I'm doing the compression test. So it keeps the cranking consistent. Appreciate it. So everything is all set up now and I just got to get out the compression tester and get that process underway. Here's the unit I'm working with. High-end brand. Got the gauge. The hose clicks into the gauge. Screw the hose into the head. If this doesn't fit, there's multiple adapters down here that should fit. And if that all doesn't work, I'm pretty sure you can just click these directly into there and just hold it on there. But I don't think that's going to work for my setup since it's just me. This may prove to be difficult to not cross thread this thing. Hmm. I'm gonna check number three before number one because it was possible to get to number three and I'm just gonna 
do that one first because it was easier. Well, that's good. So number three. One fifty. I don't know a ton about cars, but here's one thing I do know. I was struggling to get number one to thread in there. So I just left it alone. And I went to number three. Then I went to number five. Then I went to number seven. And by the time I got three, five, and seven, I had then gained some experience and skills enough to make actually putting number one in there not too bad. Just had to get a little bit of skills and twisting that tube the right way, and it really wasn't that bad. So I don't know if the lesson should be do the hard stuff last or not, but I guess, I guess that's what I'm saying. Anyway, let's check the compression on number one, and then we'll have this whole side knocked out. Well, the driver's side turned out great. I mean, as good as I would expect from an engine this old. So now I'm on to the passenger side of the engine, and I'm starting with number eight, which is the one plug that looked different than the rest of them. I can't say for sure what that plug is telling you. It's not telling me much, but I am anxious to uh, throw the compression gauge onto the cylinder and hopefully it's in that same range as the rest of them. Fingers crossed. Yeah, 150, that's slightly relieving. I went ahead and finished those last three cylinders. Everything went smooth with that. And they were all 150 on the dot. So 150 across the board on the passenger side, on the driver's side, roughly 147, 150, 145, 147, which is all a really close range. I'm just spouting some random numbers off the internet, but from what I've read, you like the minimum you want these to be is between 120 and 150. And then you're looking pretty good if you're between 150 and 180. Additionally, you want them all to be pretty much the same. You want you don't want any more than like a 10 or 15 percent difference in any of those numbers. And I'm pretty sure this is only like, I don't know, like three to five percent. And then you can also tell if you have a head gasket out, if two of them next to each other are both really low, then that's a sign that you have a head gasket issue. But we are good. <sighs> that's relieving. It's relieving to know that the general health of the engine is going to be pretty good based on those numbers. It's also relieving that the whole process went really really smooth that only took maybe a few hours and that's with filming and everything so usually doesn't work like that usually something you know one thing well i guess that cylinder one trying to get the uh compression testing thing on there took a little while and it was a struggle but compared to what could have been with the plugs and the headers and trying to get all that in there and doing something that I've never done before, man, today's a good day. So I guess from here, it's just time to put things back together and then continue to dig a little deeper and continue to dial things in a little bit better. In the next episodes, I'll be putting a fuel pressure gauge on here and dialing that in, getting a functioning tack so I can know what my RPM is putting in new plugs and new wires and then getting a timing light on here and dialing that in the right way. And then doing a vacuum test and learning how to interpret those results. And from there, it should just be dialed in the carb if everything works out. And I got a lot to learn in that process, but I'll get it figured out. But man, I'm so glad that this compression test went well. 
And also, I'm glad to have you along for the ride as I restore this beautiful, yep, beautiful Corvette. I really do appreciate you watching. I'll see you next week.